Hi. 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 Welcome to Macintosh Librarian Labs. Today we're going to be talking about my power supply in my Apple IIe. Recently, a Rifa cap exploded in it and smoke came out. Luckily, this didn't hurt the computer, but this power supply is pretty old and a lot of the components probably are tired and worn. So I think it's time to replace it with a reactive micro replacement power supply kit. So I'll be going over this and talking about the pros and cons of replacing the guts of your power supply versus just replacing the bad capacitor or the Rifa capacitor. And what this does is essentially filters out a lot of the noise that you would see on a mains voltage line. For instance, if I was running a blender or if I had a laser printer in the same room that caused a lot of interference, having this filter would help. Since this power supply is getting pretty old, I think it would be a great time to replace it with a brand new modern power supply from Reactive Micro. And this Reactive Micro power supply comes as a kit, which includes kind of a breadboard that sits inside the stock chassis of the Apple IIe's power supply. And then you simply bolt this on top. And it includes a push to connect wire connectors so that there's minimal soldering and hopefully we can get away with this without having to solder. And based on the instructions I saw online, this should only take us about 15 minutes or so. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the Apple IIe. So right now this Apple IIe has a bad power supply. It still runs, but the Rifa cap exploded on it. So I don't want to risk running it any longer. And I think since I love my machines and I want them to use them for many years down the road, I want this to be upgraded with a nice new modern power supply. So let's go ahead and unplug it from mains power first, because that would be bad and we don't want to get electrocuted. And to open the Apple IIe, it's as simple as pulling on these little tab guys right here and picking up the lid and pulling out the IIe lid. I'll just set this to the side. So as you can see, my Apple IIe already has a lot of expansion cards installed. I have the booty card, which allows me to boot from a USB flash drive to any hard disk image. I have the floppy disk controller card. This is the stock Apple controller card. I have a phaser sound card so I can get some sweet sound synthesis from some of my uh, new games. And I have the Apple Super Serial card as well as the Saturn 128 RAM expansion board. And all these cards are using power, straining the already 40 year old power supply over here. So what we're gonna do is take out this power supply by flipping the computer over and undoing the four screws on the bottom. Okay, so I want to make sure that the power supply doesn't just fall out since I'm working on this upside down. So I'm going to tilt it a little bit and put my hand here so I can hold it as I unscrew the the last few screws of the power supply. Awesome. Okay, now let's flip it over carefully. And let's see. So I'm just gonna get a flathead screwdriver and remove that um, power supply cable from the Apple II. Okay. So now that we've pulled out the wire, let's go ahead and pull out the power supply. It should be able to slide out, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove this extraneous ROM expansion board. I don't think we need that anymore since we have the Saturn 128. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna put this off to the side. And that gives us enough room to slide out this honkin' power supply. There we go. Beautiful. So as you can see, this power supply is old, dusty. Now let's look at the date on it. It looks like it was manufactured in the 47th week of 1983. Okay, there are 10 little screws on the sides of the power supply that we need to undo. And since there's so many, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my cool robotic screwdriver 
and see what we can get done and just start going at it. Okay, so apparently it needs a little bit more torque than this little guy can handle. So I'm just gonna use my handy dandy rear screwdrivers and my own nerd strength. There we go. Also, before I go any further, please note the special little warning that's on the back of the power supply, which states, warning, don't open this, you might die. So yes, please don't open this if you have no experience working with electronics, make sure everything's unplugged, make sure that you don't touch any of the capacitor leads because they may still hold a charge. And if you're not comfortable doing this, there is a service that Reactive Micro has where you can send them your old power supply and then they will do all the fixing themselves. So if you're not comfortable, let the professionals do it. Let's put this to the side because we'll need it later to put stuff back on. Cool. So here is the stock power supply for the Apple IIe. So one thing I did want to test, and it's a little dangerous, but I did want to run this open because I wanted to get a good thermal reading with my thermal camera that I just bought. And I just want to see how hot these components run, um, just out of curiosity. So let's go ahead and connect this back to the Apple IIe and live on the danger zone and run this like open like this. Don't do this at home. Hi, handheld cam time here. I'm gonna be using this little handheld thermal imaging camera to get a reading on the real-time temperature of the Apple IIe's power supply. Unfortunately, I can't get video out from this, but I can just record the screen. Here's what we're looking at down below. See that shiny, those four caps down there, then that kind of thing that looks like a, I don't know, with a flange or something. That silver guy is a, a transistor. And It is surrounding it. It's 191 F. That is really hot. That is very hot. And the cap bank, there are the cap banks. The capacitor's up there doing fine, but behind the capacitor, which is actually where the wires join in, we're seeing temperatures into the 140s, which is not good at all. Um, yeah, so that little component down there the transistor is rating a lot of heat, uh, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I will have to convert that to Celsius for you Celsians out there, but yeah, it's very hot. Okay, first let's remove the screws that are on the bottom of the power supply. This way we can take out the OEM power supply board from this case. So in this case, my mains wire had a pullout lead. So this is a brown wire. So online it said that sometimes these are pins or sometimes they're soldered onto the board, but I'm gonna yoink on them and see if they will come out. Um, we'll see. Cool. So this one, they were pins. So I was able to just yoink on them and pull them out. But in your case, if you don't have little connectors, if you don't have that, you may have to do some cutting. So I got lucky and I didn't have to cut. So let's take out the wire loom from the back so we can take out the whole power supply board. Okay, so to remove this little grommet, get some pliers, turn it 90 degrees until you see a little door and get your screwdriver and pry it open. There we go. Now it's finally out. Cool. So now that we have the old power supply board out, let's go ahead and replace it with this reactive micro mounting board. So let's do a quick size comparison with the original power supply, which is kind of stinky, and the reactive micro new power supply. So you can see how modern components have definitely shrunk 
power supplies. And now we can fit all this, which is about 40 years old, into the palm of my hand. So that's awesome. Let's move that out of the way. According to the board itself and the instructions, so make sure you read the instructions, it says that we can break off this little tab down here for Apple IIe or Apple IIgs short um, steel cases, which this one is. So in that case, I'll just go ahead and grab my pliers and grab the bottom and do some wiggling. There we go. Cool. That wasn't too bad. So now we have the board broken. Let's go ahead and slide it into our old chassis right here. And you just put it in like this underneath the switch and the plug. Let's make sure it goes on top of the standoffs that are already there. Okay, let's pull out the screws that we just removed and screw down this baseboard or base plate. I'm not sure what we want to call it. I'm sure it has a name. What do they call it? Let's see. They call it the, they call it the universal PCB. So I guess this is a universal PCB and this is a universal power supply. There you go. Okay, we'll screw it down. I definitely recommend a screwdriver with a magnetic tip because it just makes life a little easier. Also to prevent cross threading, if you feel like it's not going in back off on the screw, so screw it the opposite direction for a little bit and you'll feel it like click and that's when you know it's hit the groove and then you can start twisting it the correct direction. Now that we have our baseboard mounted, let's mount the actual universal power supply itself. And the way to do that is to make sure first we have everything correctly oriented. So there is a high voltage side and a low voltage side separated by this bar here, which is a heatsink bar. And so right now it's backwards. So you'll see here, this is where the AC adapter plug or the AC plug goes into. And that matches up with this side here, which has this little orange guy and inputs for three wires. Here is the DC side where we have the header where we can attach our DC power supply cable. This is a new one from Reactive Micro that has the regular Apple IIe connection on it, as well as a Molex adapter and a USB power adapter so that we can power some of our extra accessories that are inside the Apple IIe. So let's go ahead and install the power supply into the IIe, just like that. And let's go ahead and screw it down. The kit should have come with, and here they are, these little M3 screws. These look like, yeah, your standard M3 screw, probably, you know, typically you'd use like in a hard drive or in a PC build. Cool, okay, so now that's done. So now we can connect the AC wires to the universal power supply. Okay, so one thing I noticed is that my kit doesn't come with the male to female adapter, for plugging in my wires to the power supply. So I'm just gonna cut them and push them into this little orange connector here. Now we get our wire loom and it has a USB power, it has Molex, and it has of course the Apple IIe power. And yeah, so it has everything we need to power our system. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Cool. And we use this little grommet. I want us some grommet and push this grommet down into our power supply. Cool. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our power supply cable and our power supply, which should be wired in. Uh, let's make sure that every connection is being made properly. I'm going to pull out the multimeter and test everything. Okay, so now we have our multimeter or multimeter. <laughs> no, it's multimeter. Um, and now I'm going to test the connectivity for the neutral and the live wires that we spliced in using these funky connectors on the universal power supply. Based on what I can see can be tested on this little filtering capacitor right here and also right here. 
Okay, so I tested it and unfortunately it didn't work. So the issue was that this wire, or actually this connector is meant for a 16 gauge wire, which this supplied wire is, and this one is not. So it wasn't making a connection. So I'm gonna use this quick splice connector to splice in the wire that the power supply came with. And let's hope that this makes a good connection. Let's do the crank. Cool. Let me put the little cover on and then it's long enough and we should be able to poke it into there. So I probably should have just started off with using this little splicer guy. Uh, I learned my lesson, but it fell out of the little splicer guy and now I need to redo it. So I'm going to use a Wago connector, which is my favorite type of connector. And this can handle wires between 24 and 12 gauge. So you can mate two different wires of two different sizes together pretty easily. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me do like a Wago style where I strip off uh, about a centimeter, press it in, use a little push, push that in. And then he just goes in the other end of the Swago and that's snug as a bug. So that's, that's in there now. So now let's test. I would recommend stripping the wire a little bit, but that's just what I found easier. I know the instructions say don't strip the wire, but anyway, let's, um, let's test it now. Let's plug it in. Remember, this is very dangerous. We're on mains voltage here. Oh, and you know, it works because a little LED comes on on the board, right? down there. It says a little LED. Don't touch anything inside. Let's test to make sure it's on DC voltage and let's start probing these pins. So black is ground. Actually, let's do the Molex connector because that's easy. Everyone knows Molex. Um, so ground. And this is the red wire, which should be uh, five volts. And then the yellow wire, which should be 12 volts. Perfect. And let's go ahead and we can even test here. So let's do ground to white, which is five volts, 12 volts at yellow. Let's do the green, which is the minus 12 volts. And let's go to the blue, which is the one at the end. That's minus five volts. Awesome. So it looks like everything works. So let's go ahead and disconnect this guy and put him back in the Apple IIe. So now I'm going to use my thermal imaging camera again to check the temperature of the new power supply. Now that everything's connected and connected to the Apple IIe and it's booted up, I don't have the protective shield over it. So it's very dangerous. Don't touch it. It's connected to mains right now. Um, so yeah, let's see what the temperatures are. Essentially, this resistor and that capacitor are the components that are the hottest. So, all in all, we're talking about a reduction of about 80 degrees Fahrenheit when compared to the stock power supply. And it's much smaller, as you can see. Okay, so now that we've tested it, let's go ahead and put the protective cover on and get this installed into our Apple IIe. Now, I could have soldered. I, I am, I do have a soldering iron right there. It's just, I wanted to show how to install this using the kit. And while it does work, and I didn't take apart my power supply beforehand, I didn't know I had the uh, male pin connectors coming out of the power supply. So I'd use a little Wago, which is something I had. You don't need the Wago to do this. You can obviously use the little press to crimp connectors that they have. So I like the Wagos a little better. Honestly, this is a pretty simple job. It's just connecting like one cable and another, um, the mains cable really. But when you're dealing with mains power, you want to make sure things are nice and secure. 
And I don't know if I trust these little press to crimp. No, they're probably fine. But alrighty then. There we go. Cool. So now our supply is all together. Let's put it back in the 2E. So make sure you have it facing the right way. Power port going out. Let's turn it over and see if the holes line up so that we can screw it in. Okay, so this is probably the best way to do it since at this angle you can actually see where the holes are. So I'm gonna put in one screw and see if I can get the rest um, when it's upside down. Cool. And all we gotta do is plug in our main power cord. I'm just gonna leave these tucked away on the side for now. Perfect. Get the cover. Cool. Nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip this thing around and I'll be back in a second. All right, let's turn it on. Cool. So it's working. And now it should be booting up into the action replay image that's on the booty card. It's good to know that with a relatively cheap power supply, and this is only about $75 for the whole kit, you can replace your old power supply in your Apple II with a brand new one that's a lower temperature, it runs more efficiently. You can even use this power supply to power something else, which I'm gonna run a USB cable up the back to power a Wi-Fi serial modem that I have. That way it can be an entirely self-contained unit that's powered by the same power supply. So check out Reactive Micro. Go ahead and order a kit. You can even get some that are pre-built into a case. And you can also get one where you solder everything together yourself. But yeah, I think this is awesome. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Macintosh Librarian Labs. And be sure to check us out in a future video for more Macintosh and Apple shenanigans. Bye. Hey, everyone. It's me, Mackie. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. I thought it would be cool if y'all could meet some of my friends here in the Macintosh Library. As a matter of fact, here's my old pal, Tui, the Apple IIe computer. Oh, hi there, Mackie. Hey, Mackie, who are you talking to? Hey, Tui, I'm making a video for the YouTube folks. You should say hi and introduce yourself to the camera. Camera? Oh, wow. Well, howdy. I'm Tui, the Apple IIe computer, Apple's longest supported personal computing machine. I was made to be an advanced version of the original Apple II computer and I was shipped with a bunch of upgrades all built in. Tired of your old Apple II with just 40 columns of text? Well, now I can display 80 columns of text. That's more text for your eyeballs. And I can display lowercase and capital letters. And this beautiful mug right here. What a world to live in. I got a whopping 64 kilobytes of memory knocking around in this here noggin. Running a MOS Technology 6502 processor cranked all the way up to a blistering one whole megahertz. Even though my monitor is green, if you hook me up to a TV, I can display up to 16 BEAU to full colors. The Apple II series also had tons of games and software made for them over the years. Some of the greats like Oregon Trail, Carmen San Diego, and Number Munchers. You could even connect us to a modem and chat with other folks through an electronic bulletin board. Wow, Tui, that's some good stuff there. Tui is just a little bit older than me, but we were around the same schools at the same time. Anything else you want to say, Tui? Nah, I reckon that's about enough. This is your old pal Tui here, signing off. Thanks for stopping on by and letting me chat your ear off here in the Macintosh Library. Hope to see y'all folks real soon. Bye, everyone. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.